Alright oh, and welcome to the next Lucosa Retro Game Review video and you fucking well are welcome to it. This is Sigma 7 which was released by Jurel, which is the... Oh, that's all you need to hear to know how good this is going to be. Uh, and this was published in 1986. Now for some reason Jurel were almost obsessed with the possibility of this game being pirated. Um, no, I don't want trainers. Well, I do want them, but I'm not going to use them. So the first screen you get once the game is loaded is this. Uh, £100 reward if your copy of this game does not have the word Jarell embossed on the cassette body. blah -de fucking blah But as always, um, the £100 reward is only paid if your information leads to a successful prosecution. Incidentally, that address there is now the address of a Tesco's. So, uh, right, here we are then with the uh, title page. And it, it's pure Durrell, uh you know, presentation from start to finish. So, we have this music, which is actually not too bad. Uh, the fact that it's written by Rob Hubbard certainly helps there I and mean, when you look at uh, well, listen to the music that was in uh, fucking critical mass holy shit so you know compared to that this music is fantastic it's far from one of Rob Hubbard's best but uh, it's not even his best piece for uh, Durrell I mean okay the Commodore 64 version of Sanitas is nowhere near as good as the Spectrum version, but I do quite like Rob Hubbard's uh, music for that game. So, uh, again, on this title page, there's all this obsession about it being pirated and, and all this. Now, this program is sold subject to the condition that it's for home use and all other rights reserved, blah, blah, blah. Unauthorised copying or distribution in whole or part is prohibited. Believe me, uh, pirates could have copied any number of games and they would nearly all be far, far better than this. So carrying on the tradition of uh, Durrell, starting a game is a fucking palaver. So you start by pressing return and you get this next page showing uh, best previous score. This is the first time I've played it. There isn't a previous score. Your present score, bonus for last phase, again, there is no last phase, last lives remaining, stage one, phase one, finally press forward when ready and away we go. Now the game is basically a series of mini games. Now this first level, loads of people always say, oh it's like Zaxxon. Uh, it's fuck all like Zaxxon, the only similarity is that it's played in a diagonal uh, perspective. But it's nowhere near as good as Zaxxon. It is about 200,000 billion times more fucking frustrating because you can never tell when you are able to actually fly over those approaching ships or when they will plough into you. So I, there you go, so they've gone straight through me, but if they did so again, they will probably destroy me. That's no probably they would destroy me. Um, now, yeah, when that happens, one particular ship will follow you, and there is absolutely fuck all you can do to avoid colliding with it. So that means it's game over, which means you've got to now sit through all of this. Just, oh, fuck off, I ain't put my name in. So you've got to wait for that to... Uh, uh, you know, get written out, then you can finally hit return, you've got to wait for this to all get written out before you can finally hit return again to actually start the fucking game, and then you got to wait for that to all get written out, and then wait a bit more for it to finally say, press forward when ready, and you can finally start again. <coughs> so, let's get this fucking frustrating uh, diagonal bit trying to get through it. The game is not easy. I mean, it's not ludicrously difficult. It's certainly nowhere near as difficult as I'm making it look. I'm making it look like it's nigh on impossible. Uh, it's, it's not that fucking difficult. Oops. 
So, the idea of the game is that uh, there are these automated factories that are creating droids. And they've all gone wrong and uh, you have to get in there and shut them all down. So, th we're now entering this factory. Uh, that first phase is that, uh, you know, all of the defence systems have been activated and everything else, so you've got to fight your way through them. So now we're into the factory. Now we get this next part, which is a bit like Pac-Man, except you can shoot at uh, everything. Now, what you need to do here, you don't have to collect all of these, like, power dots, or whatever you want to fucking call them. But, you do need to do something particular, I've done part of it there, which is, uh, there are some of these dots that you cannot pick up at all. I fucking shot that fucking thing. And again there. So you'll see that uh, there are those uh, five uh, dots which I could not collect. Now you'll also notice at the top there, there's this like red, almost like maze-like thing display. Now while it's flashing red, you cannot get off the level because you need to find two areas where this... There we go, I found the second one here. I haven't actually fully uh, revealed it yet. Oh, come on. Oh, fuck off. I bet that's my last life. Takes you right back to the start. It does that even if it is your last life. It takes you back there just so that then it will tell you game over. So, I've revealed two areas then, which uh, have these... I think that is game over now. But again, it will take me back to the start. Oh, no, okay. I can still keep going. But that... Uh, that section where you you cannot collect those uh, dots is important for the third and final stage. That was me fucking up. That surely is game over. Yeah, there you go. So I didn't even get it the third, the third fucking stage. And herein lies one of the problems. The game is frustratingly fucking difficult. Fuck off. Didn't even fucking put the L O in. Alright. So, uh... Right. Well, I've got to somehow try and show all, all of the levels. So, uh, what I'll do is, um... Hmm. Yeah, hang on a sec. Right, we're back. So, uh, let's get this last go over with. So, again, trying to, uh, get through the, uh, Diagonal scrolling bit, in case you hadn't noticed, yes, I have activated the fucking trainer. Fucking sue me. I hate fucking playing games with trainers, but to be honest, I hate playing this game in any fucking uh, way, whether there are trainers in it or not. Right, so I've landed. So we get on to the uh, second phase then, which is the uh, the, the Pac-Man-like go uh, level. Right, so let's try and find uh, 
is what he found. Oh, what a fucking cuntish layout. Okay, alright. You do obviously get uh, points for, uh, you know, collecting these uh, power. I don't know what the fuck they're called, but you get points for them anyway. Obviously, I mean, there is no challenge whatsoever now because I've got the fucking trainers going. But uh, it looks like there may only be one. Oh, no, here we are. Uh, you'll notice the uh, that uh, symbol in the top there is now flashing green because I found both uh, the areas where you can't pick up the uh, uh, dots. Now, initially, people thought that that is the game crashed, but, uh, no. You need it for this section. So now, what you have to do is to uh, recreate that uh, design. So we know it's one, two, one, one, two. Now, the problem is, these are, um, like, circular things that are orbiting, um they are like defense platforms and uh, they will highlight a particular square which you can see is yeah, the one that's below me now if they highlight that and then you activate it you lose a life the other thing is that when you are activating a square to uh, try and turn it into the uh, you know, replicate the design that you have found um, you can only do it while the square is yellow. If it's any other colour, it doesn't work. If it's red, I think you lose a life. Alright, so, got that one. Ah, oh, fuck it. See, I would have lost a life there, but of course I got the trainer on, so... Alright, there we go. You have to try and basically go as quick as you can so that uh, you avoid the uh, triggered uh, square there. So there we go, by replicating that I've shut down that factory and that is stage one completed. So now we're on to stage two, phase one. So here we go. Now obviously I've, because I've got the trainers now working, I cannot die. So let's get the review underway. Graphically I think it is staggeringly bland. By Jarrell standards they are pretty good, but that, I say that's by Jarrell standards. That does not mean they are actually considered decent graphics. They are fucking shit. Well no, actually no a bit harsh, they're not fucking shits, but they are amazingly bland, there is nothing particularly impressive about them at all. Uh, likewise the sound effects, they are again very very bland, there's, there's not much to them, um, and the music is pretty good, so it's a, a Rob Hubbard piece which certainly helps, not his best, but it's, it's still, you know, it's Rob Hubbard's, you know it's going to be pretty good. Uh, and then uh, the gameplay, well, there's no real sort of like flow to the gameplay. They're, they are three sort of mini games that on the surface have absolutely nothing to do with each other. They, they don't seem to be in any way actually connected. So you are, it's, don't say it's exactly the same fucking layout as before. The next uh, 
area we you, you have to try and guess it is a bit bigger than uh, the last one but even so it's more or less the same fucking layout uh, the the idea of you know trying to uh, shut down the factory by using the uh, area that almost looks glitched in this section is quite novel and you know I wouldn't say it, it's it's terrible I think it is actually not a bad idea it's just that like so many fucking Jarrell games it's been badly implemented and uh, I mean the game is just no fun to play at all and things like this really don't help where in order to get the screen to scroll you've got to go so far to uh, you know the, in the particular direction that you can't actually see the enemies that are going to uh, appear so I think I'm fairly close to uh, completing this yeah I've got the uh, green symbol now so we can uh, get out of here if you go to that end part when the green symbol isn't uh, flashing then it just doesn't do anything so oh bollocks I'll switch it off so this is normally the most difficult part of the game but like I say because uh, because I've got the trainer active oh fuck off because I've got the trainer active it's well it's no challenge at all now oh fucking hell the challenge is actually you know not to play it like a fucking cunt and keep holding down the fire button for too long or mistiming it so um yeah how do I rate it I really don't uh, the uh, so the, the phases are there's n nothing in any of the phases to make them stand out uh, there is nothing that really connects them uh, they are all so totally disjointed that you know linking them together uh, well it's a tenuous link at best uh, I suppose you could say well at least they had a go at linking them but Uh, with the, uh, this uh, 3D shoot 'em up part, it's too fucking annoying because you've just got no indication of what ships can fly past you and which ships will fly into you, except if a ship is flying sideways towards you. Then you know it's going to plough into you, but by which time there is absolutely fuck all you can do about it. So then you get this section here, which, you know, it's basically Pac-Man, but you can shoot things. Uh, you know, uh, it, you know, it's not exactly the sort of game design that's going to have people thinking this is a, a must-buy game, you know. But, of course, it is set up in such a way that you, you have to explore it quite thoroughly to make sure you've uh, got the uh, design of uh, that is necessary to shut this factory down. So it looks like I've found it. But uh, it's, it's marked out on here twice. So I have to find the second one. Well, there's no way around here. So. Now if you can get far enough away, you are able to outrun those 
things, but then they just crop up again here because they have respawn points all over the fucking level. And then the third level, the, the, the sort of puzzle game level, I mean, it's... Again, it's pretty forgettable, as you see, I hit there and, you know, nothing happens because I haven't uh, done enough yet. I don't know if it's because I haven't picked up enough... Uh, it must be, yeah, I haven't picked up enough of the uh, power pills because as soon as I pick one up, it then went green, so here we go. And I've forgotten what that design looked like. <laughs> so this should be good. Alright, well, I know, uh, I know it would help if I was actually on top of the right fucking uh, area. I think it was one, I think it was five all the way across here. Oh, fuck off. And now there was some... Uh, I think that's saying it's wrong. So was it here then? Yeah, that was right. Uh, I think there was another one. Was it here? Fucking hell, there's still at least one more. Oh, fucking hell, what am I missing? Is it this one? I hope that's wrong. Oh, I can't fucking remember what it was. Well, there you go. So, uh, well, that's Sigma 7. Played like shit. Um, I'm not a fan. The uh, levels are all just completely... Yeah, they're all just... Uh, have nothing really uh, in common with each other. They're just all slapped together, seemingly for the hell of it. Um, and... Uh, yeah, the game is a combination of boring, extremely frustrating, uh, and it just doesn't have anything going for it at all. So I will rate this 2 out of 10, because the Rob Hubbard tune is okay, but that is it. So that is Sigma 7 for Commodore 64. Not very good. Though by Durell standards, it's okay. That says more about Jarrell than it does about this game. That's this review mercifully brought to an end, and we'll see you at the next one. <laughs>